In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the angular momentum using determinants. The question reads, calculate the angular momentum of a 3.0 kilogram mass at 3.0 meters in the x direction and negative 2.0 meters in the y direction and with velocity components of 20 meters per second in the x direction and negative 30 meters per second in the y direction. Now before we start the process, remember that angular momentum is a vector and vectors have x, y, and z components. Now to calculate angular momentum, we have to take the cross product between the radius and the linear momentum, p. Both of these are bold, which means that they're also vectors and they also have x, y, and z components. Now we have been given the x and y components of the radius, and specifically we're told that the angular momentum that they want us to calculate happens at 3.0 meters in the x direction. So I'll say that the vector r has the x component of 3.0. It has a y component, right here in the y direction, of negative 2.0, and a z component, which is not stated here, so it's 0. And of course, the units are in meters, so I'll write down meters out here. Now for the vector p, which represents the linear momentum. Linear momentum is calculated by taking the mass times the velocity. Velocity is a vector on its own. So I'll write down the vector p is equal to a mass of 3.0, that's the scalar quantity, kilograms, and that's being multiplied to three components of vector v. And luckily, we've been told the x and y components of vector v. We've been told that the x component is 20, the y component is negative 30, and we haven't been told anything about the z component, so we'll say it's 0. Multiplying this out, where I take 3 and multiply to each of these components, I end up with 60, 3 times negative 30 is negative 90, and 3 times 0 is 0. And remember, the units for linear momentum are in kilograms times meters per second. So these two vectors, r and p, will be used to help us find the angular momentum. To find the cross product between r and p, we have to find the determinant for a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, how do we produce that 3 by 3 matrix? So I'll write down that the components for the angular momentum, L, I'll write down in our first row, I, J, and K. Those are the components for X through Z, respectively. Notice that we use the unit vector K to represent Z components. The next row will be R, and we know its components are 3, negative 2, and 0. And the components for P go in that third row. I'll write down 60, negative 90, and 0. Now we do have a video on how to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. And in that video, you will learn that to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, it's as simple as following a formula. And that formula is shown on your screen right now. Now you could choose to follow this formula, or you can use a trick. And that trick is also discussed in that video, where we write this sequence of numbers down, twice, like that, and this sequence of numbers the same way, now to find out the x, y, and z components, we will follow this little pattern. So negative 2 times 0 makes 0, and 0 times negative 90 makes 0 and you subtract those two values. So this results in 2, 0. That's the x component of the angular momentum. Now let's try that again. 0 times 60 makes 0, and 0 times 3 makes 0 again. You subtract those, and you end up with 0 as your y component. Then 3 times negative 90 makes negative 270, minus negative 2 times 60 is negative 120. Combining these two numbers, we get negative 150. 
This means that the angular momentum will only have a z component, which is negative 150. And the units for angular momentum, since we are multiplying kilograms times meters per second times meters, will be kilograms times meters squared per second. And you want to show this with a k. That's the unit vector for the z component. Now interestingly, if we were to graph this on an x, y, z graph, where that is z, this is y, and that is x, the vector would look like this. It would go directly down, and the magnitude would be negative 150. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the angular momentum using determinants.